All right, so CD Projekt Red just wrapped up their official live stream dedicated to patch 1.3. They showed off some of the new content we'll be getting with this patch, including this new car right here. But also we have the full blown patch notes, which details a lot of stuff going into patch 1.3 that we're gonna be talking about in this video. And yes, we're gonna be talking about this right here, the new content being thrown into patch 1.3 as well. So let's dive in. Hey everyone, what's happening? Overworld Games here, hope you're doing good. And yes, we are talking about more Cyberpunk 2077. And if you sat in on the live stream, I could tell by the chat, most of you were not impressed with what was going on uh, with patch 1.3 and I do not blame you but if you're wondering what is going to be included with the free DLC that's going to be thrown into this new update check it out here we're going to be getting an alternative appearance for Johnny Silverhand two new jackets for V which you'll never see because there's no third person view in this game uh, you have a brand new car which they did show off the car looks actually really cool that's the type of stuff that I'm into and would love to see more of uh, as free DLC because you can go third person with it. You can see the customization, but it would be cool to see car customization. Anyway, uh, they did show off the alternate appearance for Johnny Silverhand as well. You could see him right here. Um, I think one of the developers said it looks like he's trying too hard with this look. I mean, he's Johnny Silverhand. He's cool enough. But anyway, we also have the jackets. Again, they need a third person perspective with the game to really make, in my opinion, the cosmetics matter when it comes to actually changing up of the look of your character now let's keep going shall we let's dive into patch 1.3 and talk about what is changing in the future for cyberpunk uh so let's dive in shall we so patch 1.3 is coming up here soon to pc console stadia here's the most uh notable changes coming in this update we have additional content of course which is just detailed uh as well and then we have the improvements. Let's talk about those. It says improve the minimap zoom level when driving so that it's more zoomed out and easier to navigate. Dear God, that's amazing. Then it says automatic gloves, screen with pictures of sky and angel will be displayed substantially longer, making it easier to choose between the two. I added a button which allows to reallocate the distribution of perk points on character skill tree. So that's basically respec. Increase the number of slots for auto save from 10 to 20 and for quick save from three to 10 across all platforms. That's actually pretty cool. Added databases links to journal entries, added an accessibility option for center of screen dot overlay, which helps with reducing avoiding motion sickness. It can be enabled in settings interface center of screen dot overlay. Says fixtures will now message V to offer a car for purchase less often, improve the screen space reflections effect so that it looks less grainy on consoles and on lower visual settings qualities on PC. Add the filter for quest items in the backpack. Quest item tags from miscellaneous job items will now be removed after finishing associated quests, allowing to sell or drop them. It is now possible to rotate V in the inventory with the mouse. Okay, then it says players will now properly be able to craft a quick hack even if they once crafted it and then got rid of it. Added a comparison tooltip for cyberware, improved a notification when buying cyberware and not meeting the level requirements to equip it. It's now possible to upgrade crafting components in bulk. Uh, added new sleeping spots for nibbles in V's apartment. Aww. So that's the cat. They did show that they're adding like animations for the cat as well and things like that. Like, again, I've told you guys the improvements to cyberpunk, it's gonna be an extremely slow burn until we get the bigger content releases like major exp expansions. All right, now it says icon on a disposal crate will now turn red when player picks up a body instead of being grayed out. Landmine icon will now be grayed out after disarming it. It's now possible to use an elevator when carrying a body. Happy together, Barry now has an updated, more unique appearance. Base item will now be highlighted green like other components if it's present in the inventory when crafting the same item of better quality. So there's some things going on there. Uh, I just want, it would be cool to see third person again for your character, considering that we've got these new jackets and things like that. Is that going to happen? We'll have to wait and find out down the road, but I seriously doubt. Now, let's talk about balance changes, shall we? It says, detection time of enemies now depends on game difficulty. Enemies on easy and normal difficulties will now detect the player slower. Enemies on very hard difficulty will now detect the player faster. Enemies on very hard difficulty and on only that difficulty alone will now be more aggressive when searching around when they are in alerted state. 
NCPD will no longer react and turn hostile because of dead bodies in open world activities. NCPD will now also react to hitting NPCs with a non-lethal weapon. Adjust the damaging process when shooting crowd NPCs while in combat dependent on distance and the weapon used. Then we have Don't Fear the Reaper, improved Adam Smasher's behavior during the fight, play safe, improve the behavior during this fight. So a bunch of stuff going on with fights there. They improve, introduce minor tweaks and improvements, bouncing of the contagion quick hack as well. Improve the crafting system so that the items with random quality scale their quality with players crafting skill. It's not possible anymore to roll a quality exceeding exceeding, excuse me, that of the relevant crafting skill. The level requirement of items will now increase with each upgrade. Note, the level of upgraded items will be adjusted as a result of this change. The equipped items which exceed the level requirement can keep being used, but if unequipped, we'll have to wait until the required level is reached. Added more crafting specs for cyberware mods, added crafting specs for knives, uh, updated the number of components required to craft some items, Balanced crafting, so a lot of crafting stuff going on here. They balance the crafting specs for clothing mods, balancing the number of components required to craft clothing, balance the number of components required to craft uh, this, I don't know how to say that, optical camo cyberware will now be available for purchase from Ripper Docks. Uh, adjusted price of the sensory, sensory excuse me, amplifier cyberware mod, rare unity crafting spec will now be attainable during Suspected organized crime activity tigers by the tail. Change the price and quality of Carrie's guitar that can be attained during gig psycho fan. So there are some changes. Those are more specific changes right there. But what about gameplay? What has changed in terms of gameplay? We talked a lot about crafting just there. Uh, it goes on to say this, fixed an issue where crafting specs from clothing stores were available only during the first visit to a vendor. Fixed an issue where, uh, which occurred, excuse me, after visiting the nomad camp resulting in being unable to use weapons and quick menu items, they also fixed an issue where hacking a neutral target wasn't counted towards the Christmas tree attack achievement. Tutorial windows. So this is very minor, minor stuff. V will no longer look down after using fast travel. Okay. <laughs> uh, now they also adjusted the functionality of multiple perks here. A uh, minor fix is related to how V behaves when dialogue is fast forwarded. Let's take a look at the drop down here. It says, here's an example. Hit the deck perk will now work properly on knockdown and staggered NPCs. Can't touch this perk. Will now grant the player immunity to blind from their own flash grenades. Crazy science perk will now properly increase the sell price of all items. Hacker Overload perk will now grant a recipe for the epic whistle quick hack. Guitars from New Dawn phase will no longer be dis disassembled and won't be automatically disassembled when having the scrap of perk. Player will now properly have a chance of looting a weapon attachment with the mech looter perk. Nice. So those are some uh, pretty cool changes right there to the perk system. Now again, they uh, added minor fixes related to how V behaves when dialogue is fast forward. They fixes. Some fixes related to crafting, we already know that. Rebalance and added some loot. Fixed various items that couldn't be picked up. They added new items and removed duplicate items from some vendor stock. So let's see, let's see what they added here. It says remove duplicate crafting specs from weapon shops in Vista del Rey, the Glen Rancho Corona, Coronado. And then Badlands and Pacifica added some food items to the trailer park food vendor stock. I don't even know if anyone will care about that, but yeah, that's been added in there. Now, they fixed behavior and visuals of multiple devices, uh, fixed various issues with elevators, introduced various fixes and improvements towards behavior and reactions of NPCs and living city in general. Let's dive into that a little bit more and see exactly what they mean by that. It says turrets should now have a common target with NPCs. Adjusted the NPCs behavior when their car is stolen. NPCs will no longer react by crouching to every gunshot. Fix an issue where some NPCs wouldn't run away from combat scenes. Traffic vehicles will now honk after hitting V. Vehicles will no longer get stuck in their position upon saving and loading the game while they're in the air. Okay, uh, so adjustments there. Now it says fix different quick hacks and scanning related issues. Improved NBC's behavior in combat and fixed various issues related to it. Uh, so this is interesting. 
And those seem to be more specific to quests as I open this up and check that out. They also improve some of the player mechanics as well if we dive into this further. Uh, let's see where that was right here. Tweak to improve some of the player mechanics. What do they mean? It says fix an issue that blocked double jump uh, during hollow calls. Fix an issue where V could be launched into the air when attempting to jump through or climb various terrains throughout Night City. Yeah, this was one that I dealt with a lot. It says bodies dumped into Thornton. Gull will no longer stick outside the back of the car. Uh, fix an issue with weapons becoming invisible after selecting them rapidly with the mouse scroll button. It's no longer, longer possible to open the trunk of the car while it leaves with Jatoro's body inside in Gig Monster Hunt. They add an animation for picking up and dumping bodies in vehicle trunks. Fix an animation of dumping and picking up bodies from vans. It's now possible to stash NPCs in the trunk. Wow, lots of stuff with uh, trunks and NPCs. <laughs> It says, fix an issue with the Beast of Me city center where Clara's car could be spinning around in circles instead of driving away if the player chose not to go with her to a garage. Players can no longer use frightened NPCs as human shields when a police warrant is applied. Fix an issue where V was able to fast climb or slide down ladders. So yeah, some smaller adjustments. A lot of these are smaller adjustments, but definitely like quality of life improvements, which overall definitely help uh the game for sure now there are some stability and performance fixes across the platforms all platforms it says right here multiple performance improvements various streaming improvements memory optimizations and memory management improvements they said on stream that they are very happy now especially after this patch uh with how the game is running and they're excited about <clears throat> excuse me little under weather today about the future of cyberpunk 2077 so that's really good news now they have some ui stuff in here as well uh and then graphics audio and animation changes this is going to be very very specific stuff you guys can check out the full patch notes in the description below for yourself environmental level fixes quests uh so yeah tons of quest stuff like you guys should see the list of uh, these minor fixes they have in the quest right here look at this there's actual these actually expand <laughs> oh my god this just goes to show you that this game was not ready at launch now some open world stuff they have here fix an issue allowing multiple debris holocalls from fixers to play at once okay remove redundant loot from the body in the ferris wheel and then of course more gigs it just keeps going and going cinematic design uh, and more stuff related to, I believe, missions, miscellaneous fixes, PC specifics, as fixed issue where the tutorial tooltips weren't correctly displayed on 8K screens, which that's going to be rare. Who has an 8K screen? My God. Console specific as well. Again, check out the uh, patch notes in the description below. But overall, the patch is more about quality of life improvements, what I'm seeing. The free DLC is extremely underwhelming. I do like the fact that they're adding cars into the game. I think that's really, really cool. Uh, the jackets don't matter as much because there's no third person perspective. You can't really see, you know, your character. So that's an issue right there. Uh, but hopefully we do get into like more stuff related to actual uh, open world events that we can get as free DLC. That would be really cool. Encounters, that sort of thing would be awesome to see down the road uh but yeah let me know what you would like to see as free dlc please by all means sound off but it's time for your top comments uh on my previous video so let's do this this is my recent video right here uh about finally dev team gives new update patch 1.3 and free dlc we got further updates today phoenix says this i hope we get further police system improvements as well as better npc ai and interaction i'm glad to hear news at last though elijah says i've still not completed all the little side missions uh the police beating and the police beating stuff and yellow icons where certain clients want stuff taken care of i don't play the game 24 7 because life but i think about this game that much so yeah it shows how many people are interested in this game still sentinel says i would love to see a dlc at a continuation of the ending make it so v finds a way to stay spoiler and continue on to become a big player in night city that would be cool buying cars and customizing them buying apartments and maybe even businesses to bring in some cash anything to make the world feel more alive yeah i agree that would be really really cool to see 
uh, them expand the world in that way where you can have like real estate and perhaps uh, your character could become like some sort of underworld mafia boss of the future. At least that would be a cool option in my opinion. I would love that. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. There it is, update 1.3. It's gonna be, again, a slow burn with this one uh, fixing this game. It's gonna take a lot of work on CD Projekt Red's half. And um, for us, the community, it's gonna take even more patience. <laughs> A crazy amount of patience here if they are to pull off some sort of epic uh, revival. We'll see what happens. But thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more. And I will see you all next time. Take care.